roster is complete. It doesn't include Yuli Guriel. We're going to talk about this and our storylines for spring training on this edition of Locked on Astros. Let's go. Alvarez hits a high drive center field. Veer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. Find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Stros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H John Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All righty, guys. Thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube. Make sure you continue to be locked on us on YouTube and keep on subscribing to us. Give us a big fat thumbs up and go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, Google, Yada, yada. So many different avenues to make us your first listen. So what's your excuse? Just listen to us on your way to work, at work, on your way home from work, wherever you're, uh, do, whenever you have some free time, just listen to Locked on Astros podcast. So we got a lot to talk about. The Astros finally have somebody that Dusty Baker could use possibly as a lefty reliever. I know there's several in-house options, but now there's somebody that the Astros could be pretty high on. We'll talk about that. He's somebody that they claim from the uh, Blue Jays over the weekend, or I guess just today. And some guy that we didn't talk about last year, he signed a, uh, last week, he signed a minor league deal with the Houston Astros. Um, and he was somebody that the t- Tigers tried to make as a uh, setup guy or as a closer at one point. So this is another interesting name as well. And we're going to go and get to like uh, the storylines for spring training as the uh, players are reporting for the World Baseball Classic. So that means baseball is here. Uh, Pitchers and uh, catchers report in three days. I'm excited about this. So let's go ahead and get to this. So I do want to, before we talk about the rules, I do want to go ahead and talk about Matt Gage. He is the new pitcher that the Astros have claimed off waivers from the Blue Jays. He is a 30-year-old rookie, lefty, And he had a good cup of tea with um, the Blue Jays last year in 11 games. He was 0-1 with a 1.38 ERA. He had 12 strikeouts and 13 innings pitched, a 0.92 whip. And I believe that he was actually being used as the AAA closer down in AAA for the Blue Jays. So this was a matter of they needed space, roster space. So I I want to ask you something, Brett. With the fact that Andrew Chafin was kind of um, just signed by a team and there's still some lefty relievers out there, uh, and you see the teams like the Astros kind of going without a lefty, is the, um, is the need for lefty relievers kind of going out the window? I mean, I don't necessarily think it is. I know that whole scenario really changed a few years back when right. they limited, you know, pitchers not being able to just be a one batter, um, you know, type of pitcher with, with, with Matt Gage coming in, you now have Austin Davis, part of Mishinsky, Parker Mishinsky, Blake Taylor, and you have, so he's a fourth lefty. Um, right. It was funny watching uh, Brian McTaggart and Chandler Rome go back and forth on this. And, you know, when you have a lefty, why not get another lefty, you know, kind of thing. And they're like, probably said by Dusty. Um, Dusty loves his left-handed relief pitchers. Um, and we'll see, you know, our our right-handed relief pitchers have actually done um, quite well um, in reverse splits. But if someone like Blake Taylor c- can come back from his injury, I think Parker Mashinsky has a high upside. This guy, you know, Matt Gage, I don't know. He's 30. He hasn't really pitched much. Had, what, 14 saves last year in AAA. And... I just think that this this may be a placeholder. He takes the 40th spot on the roster. You go in with the full roster. 
you you kick the tires on a left-handed relief pitcher. If he turns out that he is someone who can benefit with being in this tough relieving core, that one of the top relieving cores in the, in the game, then this is probably the perfect team to do it at. Um, I don't know because he was he was cut to make room for his you know from his last team, so he obviously wasn't very highly valued, but at the same time. He did get his major league debut. Yeah. You know, we won't know what a move like this means until we get through spring training. Is well, if, he- you, if you're looking at the slider, uh, his spin rate is uh, 21 26, which is decent. His spin rate on his cutter is uh, 2200 evenly. And his fastball, he has a 21 35 spin rate. His whiff percentage on his uh, slider is 50%. So there are some, uh, if you're looking at the analytics, there are some things that will kind of lead you to say, yeah, I think there's a reason why the Astros went out and got him. He doesn't throw his slider a lot, but at the same time, he, he mostly relies on his fastball, his cutter, um, and he throws 93.8 mi- or sorry, 92.8 miles per hour. His cutter is about 86.7. So he does throw a changeup occasionally, but so you're saying he's not a very hard thrower. No, and uh, but a lefty you don't have to be, especially if uh, if you're going to be like a. You, I know we don't have quote unquote the lefty specialists anymore, but somebody that um, we need to look out for, maybe not during spring training, which we'll get to in a second, but uh, is somebody that we kind of looked over last week just because of the whole. We had a lot of guests on. If guys, if you didn't catch our guests last week go check them out jc Correa, david uh, p sampson uh there was just so many great uh guests we had on last week but the astros also signed brian garcia uh to a minor league deal and you might say well minor league deal what's a big deal about it he's still just 27 years old uh, last year he uh the the tigers tried to, him out as a starter it didn't work out so well he uh, walked 10 batters in 20 innings he did strike out seven, 17 batters in the 20 innings pitch. He was 2-0 in four starts. So there are some things that you can look at. I think the Astros would be looking at him purely as a backup uh, reliever just in case there's injuries. So that's just something that you can't look past because he does have six career saves. He does have some holds in his career with the Tigers and his career ERA overall is um, 5.52. You might say, well, that's not great, but he has one season of 1.66, the other one at 3.54. He just has two bad years of 2021, 755, and 2019 of 12.15. So, so he, yeah, so he basically had a bad year, a good year, a bad year, a good year. Yeah. <laughs> basically. So let's hope that if last year was a decent year, let's hope it's not a bad year yeah. for him, right? And I I will disagree with you on one point. Uh, I know that you put that Yuli is not an option for the Astros anymore. They could DFA anybody off the forty man roster if they oh, want. No, Yuli but Grail. I'm just saying going into going into spring training with the forty man roster, he's right. clearly not on there. So right now, he's oh, okay. not an option. I mean, yeah, I mean they could. He's an option. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. I right. understand I he's an saying. option. No, I understand that. But right now, I, I have seen nothing that hints from the Astros right. that they are interested in signing Yuli. He, I think he wants more than a one-year deal. I don't think they're willing to give him that. I think he wants more than a part-time job. He's not going to get more than a part-time job. Right. He's this, this, this idea that I keep seeing on social media that he is the utility guy to take Libnus Diaz's spot is completely the most unbaseball take That's I've seen all like- day. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Physically, it doesn't make any sense where he's at in his career. He's not your utility guy. Your utility guy in the infield is David Hensley. Your utility guy in the outfield right. is Mauricio Dubon. So, and he clearly, he just he just doesn't fit. And it it's, for the Astros, it's not about loyalty. For the Astros, it's about fielding a championship roster. And you and I, Eric, both love Yuli. I mean, we we have been marveled by what he's done. We have we have looked at his accomplishments, his postseason clutch hitting, right. even last year. But Yuli Guriel, he's just come to a point in his career where, had we not signed Jose Abreu, I'd be like, you know what, go ahead and bring on Yuli. Why not kick the tires? But right now, it's just not going to be in the cards. And now, if you want to talk about being in the cards, you want to talk about 
being in the mix. Let's look at um, Built Bar right now, okay? Because on the 14th of February, we are just two days away from the 16th. And I want to talk to you about Built Bar, especially if you're going down to spring training. Looking for a delicious treat to hang out with you while you're watching the boys get ready for the 2023 World Series run? Well, you got to try Built Bar. It's healthy and actually tasty. Seriously, they are so delicious that you'll think they're actually good for you. And they're not. Well, actually, they are good for you. But the thing is, you'll be tricked into thinking that this good for you treat is a candy bar, but it's really a protein bar. So the bottom line is this. It's wrapped at 100% chocolate. The macros are amazing, just like the Astro stats. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need um, to wait around about trying to find that perfect snack, the perfect you know caloric intake. Go grab a Built Bar. They have amazing flavors. They have cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puffs, so much more. But not just by going to Built.com. You can go to Walmart or Sam's Club. So head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box of your hit flavors, uh, brownie batter and churro. That's right. You can thank me later. So go to Built.com or stop by Walmart or Sam's to pick up your Built Bar today. All right. So before we get to our spring position battles, our uh, spring stories to kind of look at, somebody asked in the chat, uh, what's going on to Pedro Leon? We don't hear a lot about him. Well, he's actually recovering from sports hernia surgery. This is something that's going to keep him out for extended amount of time. I do see some video of him actually running in the field. So that's a good sign that he's recovering a little bit, but he's probably not going to be playing actual baseball for probably another month or so maybe more. So I don't think he's going to be in the cards for the Astros until at least mid season or maybe even a September call up. So that's, what's going to Pedro Leon. He has not, nothing's happened to him like as a prospect, as a a part of the Astros future. It's just the fact that he had to have a sports hernia surgery. So. Yeah. um, You know, and we're going to see whether he is, I mean, I mean, we're going to see him in in AAA Sugarland this year, and we're going to see if he's fixed that fix that hitch in his swing. Um, y'all have to apologize. I'm a little discombobulated here tonight. <laughs> My mind is in five different places. But Eric, I want to talk about the um, storylines that I have going into spring training. the the three The three storylines that I have set before me that I think are the most important for for myself and for the fans to watch is. Number one, will Hunter Brown emerge as a bullpen piece or as a starter in a six-man rotation? Number one. Um, Number two, who will the backup catcher be? I think that's really the only true position battle in spring training. And then when will Michael Brantley be ready? Um, You know, with Hunter Brown, and I'll get some of your um, take on this, with Hunter Brown, I don't know – if he gets the Javier treatment that Javier got last year where he was in the bullpen, he was a starter, kind of went back and forth. Um, I like Jose or to take more of that role. If they're not going to go with the six man rotation, that's the question. Are they going to do a five man or a six man? If they do a six man, um, then you could easily go for me, Framber, Javier, McCullers, Garcia, Brown, and Arquiti. That's what I would do. I would put Brown five, but if they go with the five man, and that means Urquidy or Brown is the odd man out. And I would rather Urquidy go the bullpen starter route and put Brown in there and give him those innings, stretch him out, give him that starter role, because he is your future front-end starter, one or two pitcher. To me, he's too young in his development, and it's, it's too key for his development as a starter to just put him as a bullpen guy. I don't think he think he's way more than a bullpen piece. And I think he would be way more valuable if they went ahead and slotted him in in that rotation. What do you think about Hunter Brown? Um, I think that Hunter Brown, honestly, is probably going to start the year in AAA. Uh, If you look at what's going on, it has nothing to do with him. It has nothing. uh, I mean, I I hear you about the the Christian Javier treatment, but I think that what they want to do is they legitimately want to build him up as a starter. 
And yes, they will be going to a six-man rotation. But if you look at uh, what's going on in April, they have um, – where when does the season start? It does start in April, right? Yeah, so uh, they have a lot of off days in April. So they have uh, on the 7th of April, the 13th of April, the 20th of April, the 27th of April. They have a lot of off days. So you don't need a six-man rotation in April. So that's why I think that he's going to be down in Triple A, uh, and we're, they're going to be building up his pitch count. Um, you don't do that to Jose Arquiti. He's going to start off the season in the rotation, but I do think that uh, it will be a six-man rotation. And I think that uh, once Brown comes up, he's going to be in rotation for good. And from that point, it's going to be whoever's not pitching well is going to lose their spot or they're, they're going to stick to a six man rotation because the Astros are they have that deep of a pitching staff. They've seen how um, allowing that extra start uh, day between starts that will keep your pitchers healthy, save some innings for October. And we saw how it helped the bullpen in October. It helped everything. So it just I think we will see a six man rotation, but I I'm, I'm not saying that Brown's not going to start in the major leagues. He deserves to. He has nothing to prove in AAA. If he does start the year in AAA, it's only to build up his innings. Yeah. In, like I said, we're not going to know until they make that final designation. I, I, just, I just think because he is forecasted to be that number one or number two starter, um, I, I, guess, I guess technically – both our scenarios are possible. Anything's possible at this point. I just, to me, as as a development and and you just talking to Hunter Brown and and watching him perform and knowing how frustrated he was waiting to come up. To me, it it seems like it, it would not be a good thing mentally to to start him in AAA. Like if you're at least going to keep him at the club, at at least bring him in as as a long reliever. Like keep him with the club because. Who's going to then take his spot up at the major league level? It's not going to be a Parker Mashinsky or someone like right. that or JP France. So I think he garners that now. Either yeah. way, you got to build up his innings. So you, you, you're you yeah. going to either get him three to four innings out of the bullpen. And who are you going to? Well, I would rather do that than, than start him in AAA because starting him in AAA is not going to help his help his development. This as year. long as he knows, Hey Hunter, this is only just to build up your innings. This is only build up your pitch count. This is all it is. And I think somebody as mature as he is, he knows uh, that he's, he has nothing left to prove. So I, I think if the Astros hand it the right way, I think it's be fine. Okay. Well, um, let me ask you this because you and I have talked about this before the backup catcher situation. Um, I think with Diaz's bat, with his ability to play DH, with his, his, with his ability to play other positions, of course, we know Lee can play other positions, but his bat's not as solid. I think we're going to see Diaz kind of emerge as one of the leading, um, guys to take this backup spot because I know Lee is their top quote unquote catching prospect, they but like they do like defense, but how much of a drop off is the defense? And then if you're going to sacrifice defense for offense, then when Corey Lee is in there, how's his bat going to play? Is he going to hit well? And if, if Lee's, I mean, if, if Lee's defense isn't that much higher than Diaz, but Diaz gives you that much more offensive value to me, Diaz clearly to me has the upper hand, I just hope that both of them are better for it at the end, and it's going to be really fun watching these two go to, to go at it. Because what I know of Corey Lee and conversations with him last year is I was always impressed with his mind, with the way he saw the game, and so um, I'm, you know, it's kind of hard because I'm rooting for both of them. I don't want either one of them to lose out, but somebody's going to get that spot. Yeah, and Lee, Lee is not a bad hitting catcher he struggled in his brief time no, with the Astros right. and so did Diaz so uh, both of them are basically starting from scratch and that's what spring training is all about this is a open ba basically a walk-on addition to the Houston Astros to see who gets the who's gonna be a redshirt freshman or whatever the phrase is in football and uh, just who's gonna be the starter and who's gonna be potentially it goes into one of my questions um, who's could potentially be the 26 guy on the uh, the team. So potentially both of them could make the team. 
So uh, who knows about that? So that's yeah, they could. And hey, we've got Xerxes here, the God King. That's interesting. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, hanging out with us, lovely serfs here. He says, I believe we will be seeking an offensive catcher again at the trade deadline. That's interesting. I don't know who would be out there at the trade deadline. That's definitely an interesting thought. And then Salvador Perez. Salvador Perez. That is that is a good thought. I didn't even think about that. Good good catch there. No pun intended. Um, Michael Brantley. When will he be ready? How many games is he going to get during spring training? They're not going to be fast about bringing him along, but it would be nice, Eric, if he was able to get ramped up to where he's taking hacks in a game, not just saying, oh, he took a live BP. No, I want, I want to see him in a game. I want to see him running. I want to see him, you know, I also want to see him throwing. I want to see how his how his shoulder is because if he can't throw, he can't hit. If he can't hit, he can't throw. And so I want to, I want to make sure – for me, the storyline is how ready is Brantley going to be? Is he going to be 80% Brantley? Is he going to be 90% Brantley? Is he going to be 100%? I mean, are we just assuming? I'll take 90%. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, he could come out and be 100%. We may just all assume because he's older and all this stuff. But he's a smart guy. And so, Eric, those are my three things that I'm really looking forward to going into spring training. All right. I did list a, f- a few and we'll go and talk about that in a, a few minutes. And I did want to kind of talk about some of the rule changes. And one of the rules that we all hate is coming back. And so we'll talk about that uh, in a second. But uh, Brett, uh, let's talk about a, what a lot of people probably did around the Super Bowl time. Yeah, they probably went to FanDuel because FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. And let me tell you, Now that football is over, we're midway through the NBA season, and it's a perfect time to download FanDuel. Why? Because new customers get the no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. So just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line, two-point scores, and two threes drained. That's right. Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at an even bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss out with your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Fanduel, make every moment more with Fanduel, an official sportsbook betting partner of the NBA. I cannot believe that the Astros have almost every Thursday off in April, except for the Twins home opener on the 6th. But then they have that Friday off. So they have they play uh, the first road game on the 6th. Then they have the Friday off and then play the 8th and 9th against the Twins. So stupid opening day schedule and where you have to have the day off after that. Well, also, Eric, so get this in April, May. And September, September, October. Yeah. So Thursday is like, it's like the Astros off day. So if you want to catch the Houston Astros when they're in town oh, and see them around right. town at a restaurant, go hang out on a Thursday somewhere in downtown Houston. You'll probably find Bregman eating his Breggy Bomb barbecue sauce or something like that. Um, you know, Eric, this is, <laughs> dude, I'm so excited. Like I was at school, I was smiling. Everyone's like, why are you so happy? I'm like, because football's over and baseball's back. <laughs> you know, um, for those of y'all that are listening and for those of y'all that if you haven't caught our YouTube channel, you have to check it out. Also, if you, if you, if you haven't found us on social, check us out. Um, I'm releasing two screensavers each week of spring training, one on Monday, one on Friday for you guys to grab and put on your phone. Check that out. We've got special ready to rain locked on Astros screensavers, whether it's an Android or Apple, whatever, it will fit on your phone. And I think you'll like it and enter in because we're going to find out who the mystery player is this week. The first one I released was Jose Altuve and we've got more coming. So that'll be a fun thing for y'all to do as you're waiting around for baseball to actually get going. Yeah. So go to my storylines. And I know this is kind of something that we've been kind of banging the drum on, so to speak, for a while now. But will Kyle Tucker sign extension before the season starts? And as Brandon and I talked about on Talking Strohs, it doesn't have to necessarily be 
before the season. It can happen during the season too. But I think that with the shift going away, we'll talk about some more rules in a little bit, but I think his value is just going to rise and it's going to probably take a, with somebody as young and as good as Kyle Tucker is going to be, it, you're going to have to sign him to an eight year extension to get him to even think about it. So uh, will he sign extension before the season starts? Um, can the bullpen dominate as good as it did last year? We'll have to see, like, I know it's, it's, uh, we're talking about spring training, but we'll have to see, are these guys still, um, as dominant as they were? We'll, we'll have to, I know it's, it's hard to judge a lot from spring training, but uh, is this bullpen healthy? Are we going to have to rely on people like Brian Garcia or is that, yeah, Garcia. Yeah, Brian Garcia. <laughs> yeah. So are we going to have to rely on them or can we rely on the guys that we relied on last year? So that's what I'm talking about. So is everybody going to be healthy and keeping it up? And my big storyline is going to be who's going to be the 26 man on the roster. I feel like the bullpen for the most part is set. Now, if you're looking at who's going to be 26 man, is it going to be uh, Yiner Diaz? Is it going to be Jake Myers? Is it going to be Surprise? And there's still a chance that Yuli Gurriel just says, look, I'm tired of looking. Nobody wants me as a full-time player. Astros, will you take me for $1 million? <laughs> Can you imagine signing Yuli Gurriel? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, $1 million. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole Yuli thing is just kind of, it's just kind of has a weird feeling to me. It, it doesn't even – like I don't even know how to feel about it. Like I love Yuli. I think it'd be great to have him on the team. But the fact that there's no talk at all from any teams, that's really kind of odd. His OPS was down. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, I get it. I know his numbers were down. I mean, we all saw the season he had last year offensively. It was it was abysmal. He got to the playoffs. He okay, while he got all those hits, he didn't nec- like he didn't like he got a ton of hits. He didn't exactly light the world on fire. Like he wasn't an RBI machine. He was more of a singles machine kind of hitter, but he made contact. He didn't strike out in the World Series, I believe. There were all kinds of really good things. Like he's right. got it back. He's found his his mojo again. But there's just something to me odd about a quality major league player like like him who has the postseason record he has to not have anything. And I really thought it was going to be the twins of the Astros and they just kind of tuned them out. But it's, it's really interesting to, to see fans reactions. You know, you get emotionally attached to players, but at the end of the day, it's a business. Um, the fact that Miami is out and acted like they were never really in. I mean, you know, Eric, I was, I'm actually kind of shocked that, that mm-hmm. he's not going to camp with Miami. Well, I not- honestly thought that, maybe the Rays might pick him up. Seriously, like, that just seems like a Rays type of thing. Pick up this quality major league hitter, you know? Yeah, because he would be No, cheap. no, he's, he wants too much, and he wants, uh, they, he they wants go after the young dollars. players. That's, three well, million yeah, is but not the Rays, cheap. they they operate on pennies. They, Eric, they're not going to pay him million, a dollar. Three million is pennies in major league baseball. I know, but still. <laughs> three uh, million if, is if, nothing. <laughs> I know. But um, yeah, so speaking of coming back, you know who's coming back? That's the ghost runner in extra innings. Ugh. I hate that rule, but that it's only too. during the regular season, and this is gonna stay. It's gonna be that cat that won't go away. So yes, that ghost runner like is back to stay during the regular season only, not during the playoffs, only See, during the regular season. Well, See. Th- why? Like it doesn't make any sense. It says They're the competition trying to shorten games, Brad. Oh, That's what? this whole rule I know, schedule. but shorten games for who? I mean, let's let's beat a dead horse, okay? Shorten games for who? For new fans, I'm sorry. You're not getting new fans because a game is for five people minutes that short. complain about the three second delay between the video and me saying we're <laughs> those oh. people. <laughs> uh well, you know, I mean so the competition committee also voted um, okay, or we'll get to that here in a second. So the ghost runner thing, yeah, it's literally just during the regular season. They also are limiting position players as right. pitchers to only extra innings. It says, or by a team leading by, by 10 runs or more in the ninth, in inning, ninth inning, or by a trailing team anytime it is down by eight runs or more. The sources confirm. 
Teams could previously use position players as pitchers when they were leading or trailing by six runs. I mean, this is like, these are some big changes. Um, look, at, at the end of the day, you're not going to see Brett Phillips doing any crazy warmups. You're not going to see Albert Pujols's um, on the mound. You're not going to see Tyler White type players. You're, you're not going to see these guys and you, you don't want your team to be in a situation where you have to use these guys. AJ and, Reed should have pitched that. Oh. They missed out opportunity. He used to be a pitcher. They should have let that dude pitch. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of sad that he, that he didn't. Um, I hate that someone ruined his swing, but anyways, I digress. Um, so one of the things that the extra inning, so basically let me tell you, how this affected baseball. Okay. Starting extra innings with the runner on second had ramifications that were huge in 2019. 37 games went 13 innings or longer with eight over 15 innings. Last year, there were only 11 games that lasted 13 innings or longer and none over 15. So the idea behind reducing the marathon games might be that with pitching staffs built with more and more one inning pitchers, over time and injuries continuing to stay prevalent, putting pressure on the game to end quicker could be good for arms on every team. Okay, so now you come in with logic baseball and you make me kind of like the rule because it tells me it's going to save my pitcher's arm. I'm for that. I'm for shortening the extension of the game, right? Mm -hmm. But these are just all new rules and I don't know, like, Major League Baseball this year changed to where they're going to make content available to TikTok users 15 minutes after it happens to help young content producers promote the game of baseball. That's what baseball should be doing, not changing the rules, not changing the rules. And so, um, yes, in 2019, Mr. Corona, this is what it's saying. This is what uh, this this is the source is from the athletic. But look. We don't like 20 inning marathons. Actually, we like 18 inning marathons, don't we, Eric? The Astros love 18 inning marathons. As long as they win, yeah. We're we're all we seem to always be on the if right they side lose, of those 18 that sucks. It sucks yeah. to wait. I remember a extra inning game versus the Padres and we stayed the entire time and then we lost that game. It was it was not a playoff game, but well, well but we went 18 innings against the Braves and won, yeah. 18 innings against the Mariners and won. So, we've got a nice playoff history. Yeah. So Manfred uh, came out and addressed some of this stuff. And he said, if you're addressing what the fans want, you're m more likely not to get it right. There's initial wave where it's, oh, my God, we're going to ruin a game. But people see it and get used to it. And a lot of it turns positive for a lot of people. So basically, um, he's also talking about the pitch uh, clock because the pitch clock is coming this year. And so there's going to be a lot of new rules there. You have the shift that um, we talked about earlier that's going to help people like Kyle Tucker. So there's be a lot of stuff that's trying to help the younger generation uh, enjoy baseball because back in old days, we could sit there and just watch a five-hour baseball game and enjoy it. But nowadays – you got to make a shorter game, just like basketball games. Basketball yeah. games are so much quicker, except for those 30 second timeouts that are not 30 second timeouts. Just saying. Well, and, and to, and to go ahead and I want to clarify this because maybe what I said gets, gets miscommunicated on audio. And I'm, I'm having a conversation in the chat room here with Mr. Corona. What I was stating was in 2019 without the runner rule, that's how many games there were 37 games that went 13 innings or longer with eight over 15 innings. And I wasn't saying that that's when the runner rule was implemented. That was before the runner rule was implemented. Then yeah. with the runner rule implemented, I just wanted to clarify that last year, there were 11 games that lasted 13 innings or longer, none over 15. So right. just to clarify that, cause I think the way I said it, it made it sound like I was saying with the runner rule in 2019. Right. So taking that out, before we had this new ghost runner rule, which I think it's insane. That it's, if, it's, if it's a ghost runner, then make it a ghost runner. Like, and then go, oh, he scored. Like, you didn't see him, he's a ghost. Like, because I remember playing ghost runner when we were growing up playing baseball. And your ghost runner always scored before the tag. He was never out. But you so could still get really him out. True. That's it's why. Not, 
Well, it's not a true ghost runner is what I'm saying, because it's an actual person. You can't call okay. it a ghost runner. Just say man on second. OK, let's call it what it is, because it upsets my childhood baseball mind. I don't like that. <laughs> All right. Speaking of childhood, uh, Mr. Cronus is calling us out. Uh, he says baseball's issue is capturing the youth. Baseball fans like y'all ain't going nowhere, but y'all ain't getting any younger. So thank you, Mr. Cronus. Oh, I thanks, Mr. Cronus. Well, you're not either, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway well, that's all we you. got uh for this edition of the locked on astros podcast matt gage welcome to houston astros i hope that you are dusty baker's lefty specialist or three pitcher three hit batter guy whatever you would call it so that's all we got my name is eric heisman you can find me on twitter at eric talks shows you can find brett at h town wheelhouse and we are the Locked On Astros podcast. If you're just now tuning in, make sure you go back and watch us on YouTube and subscribe. Give us a big fat thumbs up and go ahead and make us your first listen on Apple, IDC, uh, uh, Spotify, every all the other different places. And uh, that's all we got. And we'll see you tomorrow. And go Strohs. Where's the thing? Right there. All right. Bye. <laughs>